Hello, I'm Megan Dempster. I teach at Paulina Elementary in St. James Parish. I've been teaching for seven years. I currently teach fifth grade and I teach ELA. Today's objective was to read two texts, determine the overall text structures of both texts, and to compare and contrast the text as well. The students also had to determine why the author chose that specific structure to write that text through a thinking map and an essay. Um, I chose to do a carousel activity. I really enjoy doing this activity and the students do as well. It allows them to think independently on their own to discover things that they may not have discovered if I would read it to them. Um, they really enjoy that activity because it makes them in charge of their own learning. Alright guys, so today in the past, yesterday and all this week, we've been talking about text structures. Let's read our objective today to see what we're going to do today. I want you to help me read it together. On three. One, two, three. We will closely read two texts to determine the overall structures and identify the author's purposes. After doing this, we will create a thinking map and compose an essay comparing and contrasting the two texts. Let's talk about some of these words in here so you know exactly what you need to do in our lesson today. The first word, text structures. Tell me what you know about text structures. And if you forgot, we have a poster by our tree that tells us what text structures are. Jamaj, what is a text structure? How a story is written. Very good. Ten points. How a story is written. We talked about two text structures this past week. What are the two text structures we've learned about, Alexis? Chronological order and problem and solution. Chronological order and problem and solution. Very good. Ten points. How do I know if a story is written in chronological order? What would I possibly see? Think about my question. How do I know if a story or a text is written in chronological order? What would I see? Very good. He said I would see first, then next. What do we call those things? Keywords or time words, yes, 10 and 10. What else could I maybe see in a text that has chronological order? Dates, very good, 10. How do I know if a text is written in problem and solution? How would I know if my text is written in problem and solution, Brianna? It would probably say solution. It would have maybe a word in the text that says solution, you're right, 10. What else would it maybe have? It would maybe say problem. Very good. Now, let's look at another word that we're going to look at today. Author's purpose. And if you forget during our lesson what author's purpose is, we have our poster up here. What word do we think of when we hear author's purpose, Hannah? Pie. Pie. And tell me what those three words mean. Ten, Hannah. Nayla, what are our three words? Persuade and and Very good. Tan, let's talk about persuade. What does that mean to persuade the reader? What does that mean, Zahara? Trying to get someone to want to do something. Right? You're trying to get the reader to do something or stop, stop doing something. Very good. Tan, what does the I mean? Hannah? To teach the informed Very good. To inform the reader. If you are informed by a passage, you're going to learn some new information. Ten. What about the E, Hayes? Entertain. To hold the attention of the reader. Entertain. To hold the attention of the reader. I usually tell kids if you laugh or cry. Now, you may not literally do those things, but you may feel bad for a character. Or you may feel excited for a character. That means that the author is trying to entertain you. Very good. At the end of our lesson, we also are going to draw a thinking map. You are going to have a choice to choose between a Venn diagram or a double bubble. We practiced those before. You can choose one of those. You are going to draw your thinking map and compare and contrast the two texts that we're going to read today. And we're going to see what we come up with. And then we're going to compose our essay that we've been working on for a while now. We all know how to do this. We're going to do our essay. And in our essay, we're going to compare and contrast the text structures using our thinking map. Are we good so far? Okay, let's move on. A lot of kids ask, why do we have to learn this? Now, I'm not going to use this in the past. I mean, in the future. What do I need this for? Guys, text structures are important. 
You need to be able to know what you're reading about. And that's what text structures are going to do for you. It's going to help you better understand what you're reading. If you want to be a chef, you're going to have to deal with a lot of what? Say it. A lot of what? A lot of recipes and steps are heard. If I'm dealing with a recipe, how is a recipe written? In chronological order. So that is going to help me in the future if I want to be a chef. I'm going to think back to fifth grade and think, oh, we learned about chronological order, steps. Maybe I need to find out how do I make this cake correctly. I need to put my ingredients in my pan before I put it in the oven. So that's going to help you in the future. Problem and solution. We have to learn how to deal with problems every day and how to solve them. So that's going to help you as well. Let's talk about what we're going to do today in our carousel. You and your group are going to meet at your designated carousel. You're going to read two texts closely to figure out what is the text structure. And while you're reading, you need to annotate, circle, underline, jot down some notes on clue words that help you figure out the structure of the text. While you're doing that, you also need to think, why did, the author read, why did the author write this story? What is his purpose? And if you forget what that is, look at our pie poster. Also, you need to find two pieces of evidence to support how did you know the text structure was, chronological order, or problem and solution. You're going to put all of that in your chart. And we practiced that, so you know how to do this. I want to see what you can do. Everyone in your group, you know your, what your job is, my number ones. Raise your hand. You're going to read the two passages, my number ones, my number ones. My number twos, you're going to annotate the text and locate evidence. Number threes, you're going to fill out our chart and evaluate the other group's poster. Number fours and fives, you are our timekeepers, making sure our group is on task, making sure we are following our checklist. Okay, That's step one. Step two, when you are done, you are going to go to your partner group's poster and you're going to evaluate what they've done. I want you to closely look at the words they highlighted and underlined. Make sure that they are correct words that help support the structure. I want you to read their chart to make sure, did they write down the correct information? It should be very similar to yours because you read the same stories. Okay. After that, I want you to discuss with your group, why did the author write the story in chronological order? Why did the author write the story in problem and solution? And I'm going to come around and see what you're thinking about, because that's going to help us with our essay. Any questions on what we need to do? Yeah. All right, let's get to our groups. It's space exploration. It began in 1954 when scientists called the Government. 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 Yeah, 1958 is a what? A date. So what do all these things hi that you highlighted, what does that show you so far? It could possibly be chronological order because at the beginning of our lesson we said chronological order could have dates. It could have time words like you circled. So keep going. Let's see what you can get. All this space junk. Um, stop flying. Did they tell us to go out and do this? So it can't be persuaded because they're going to come out in this text and say, we need you to help solve this space junk problem. Did they do that? No. Informing us about what? Right. Did you know about Space junk? I didn't know about that. So if you've learned something new, it has to be what? Uh-huh. So be careful with those two things. I'm sorry, up here. Persuade. If they're going to persuade you, they're going to tell you in the text, we need you to help us do this. We need you to help us. Yes, like the story we read yesterday. Very good. Remember the, the tigers, how they were banishing? How did they persuade the reader to help the tigers? What they want them to do? Donate money to help save the tiger. So yes, that's persuading. They're not really telling us to go out and do anything. They're really just teaching us information. Good. So what are the two sentences y'all using for problem and solution? Very good. And how do they solve it? Guys, how do they solve 
the problem of space junk, what do they do? You have less junk in orbit. But how are they going to solve the problem of all the machine. junk? Yes, they're going to design machines. So I would use that as my evidence for solution. Write this text in chronological order. Okay, so to show us the order in how the space race happened, uh huh. Why did the author write this text in problem and solution? What it was doing to the space. What you mean? Be a little bit more specific. Listen, what you were saying? Very good. So the author chose problem and solution to write this text to show us the problem space junk is to space and how they're going to solve it. Mm -hmm. Very good. He used to show us the order. Very good. Why did the author use problem and solution to write that text? Very good. To show the problem of space junk and how they solve that problem. Very good. All right, looks like we're all done. Let's switch with our sets and evaluate our group poster. And let's see what they have. Use your checklist to guide your group on what you need to be looking for. Okay, so maybe put a little star bottom here. Just tell them why you think that when you meet them. What y'all think? So maybe put a little star by it when y'all meet with them. They can explain it to you. But look at what they're trying to do. They're highlighting this whole phrase. Uh huh. So you only need like only the important words. Okay, maybe only the important words need to be highlighted. Okay, y'all can tell them that when y'all see them. Keep going. Let's see what what they have. Look at their chart and look at what they wrote. Do y'all agree with what they wrote? Read it out loud to you from Sarah Blink in here. So any mistakes y'all saw in their text or maybe in their chart? So maybe they left out a few clue words. But overall, y'all agree with everything that they put in their chart? Is it very similar to what y'all had? Should be. So that means that we're all on track. Good. What y'all thinking? So do y'all agree that this is the problem and how to solve it? Is that what y'all think? They did that same thing too. Yeah, they took out the non-important part. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like y'all's. It should be. Yeah. Make sure you leave a positive comment on their poster. All right, let's meet with our sets and explain to them some errors you maybe saw and some good things you saw in their poster. I agree. It began to show a time, right? Shows at the beginning, right? Yeah, so maybe that, that's a good catch. Keep going. So overall, what would you tell us? Huh? So you just added a little extra detail to their answer, but overall their answer, would you say it was correct? Yeah, so maybe add a little bit more detail to that part, but I would say what y'all wrote was pretty good. Yeah, go and check out their poster and see what they have. So they were just saying that they thought maybe declaring in shouldn't be highlighted because it's not really showing time. But I understand that y'all are just highlighting the phrase. But it's okay. We all have our own opinions. What else did y'all see that y'all liked? I always thought it was good. You highlighted challenge. And we y'all highlighted the solution. How was their chart? 
Good. Was it very similar to y'all? Oh, but well, not. Not. Yeah, which well, verse yeah, did y'all use? Yeah, yeah that and plus both verses are not really that similar. Because this one's not one. No, like, well, if we did that, we don't think that first is like a but couple But there's first show out. time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're right, but I see where you're thinking. But overall, how do you think they did? Good, good, Pretty good. good. Go check out the other post and let's see what they have. When you're done meeting, you can come back and sit. Hey. Handwriting. For me, while you wait, we're almost done here. So what do y'all think about this one? What are some things y'all saw? Okay, so maybe y'all just left out a few clue words. That's not too bad. What else? Showing the problem. Okay. Because it says one way to protect. Okay. So one way to. That's okay. So they were just saying maybe next time only highlight what the solution is to the problem, so you don't confuse yourself. But I think they're all on the right track. What about their chart? It's good. Is it very similar to what y'all have? Yes. Okay, so maybe a little grammatical error, a capital letter, but overall, would you say they did a good job? Yeah. I think so. Y'all did pretty good. All right, let's get back to our seats. Once we were done with the carousel, the students were in charge of their exit ticket, which allowed them to create their own thinking map choosing a double bubble or a Venn diagram, comparing and contrasting the text structures. And they were also in charge of completing an essay that uses the double bubble or Venn diagram that they created. The students were to write an essay comparing and contrasting the two text structures of the text and explaining why the author chose that structure for that specific passage. Let's look at what we're doing next. Now that we read our two texts, let's compare and contrast our text structures. On your loose leaf, let's look at our exit ticket up here, guys. We're on our loose leaf right now. On your loose leaf, the first step I want you to do is to create a thinking map. You can choose between a double bubble or a Venn diagram, whichever one you feel comfortable with. I want you to compare and contrast the two text structures of the passages you just read. That's step one. Don't do anything just yet. Let me give you all your directions first. That's step one, creating your thinking map. Look up here. Here's our big part, our essay. Using Microsoft Word, compose a multi-paragraph essay answering the following prompt. On your laptop, you're going to use your Word processor, and you're going to write a multi-paragraph essay. What does that mean, multi Paragraph. More than one, okay, because our prompt is a little extensive, so we're going to need more than one paragraph. Let's look at our prompt. Someone read that first question to me. Um, Jamaj, read the first question. How are the text structures of the passage one and passage two similar? Very good. In your essay, you need to tell me how are the text structures of both passages similar and different. And you're going to use your thinking map that you created to help you answer that part of your prompt. Read me the second part of our prompt, Rihanna. Explain how the text structures of each passage support the author's purpose for writing. Very good. Remember that question you answered at the bottom of your poster? Why did the author write the text in that structure? That's that question. Why did the author choose problem and solution to write passage two? Why did the author choose chronological order to write passage one? That's what they're trying to say here. And you also need to make sure you have evidence in your essay. So do we understand what we're doing? Thinking that? Essay. If you're done early, I need you to reflect on our lesson today. On the back of your loose leaf, I need you to answer these two questions. What did I learn today? And what can I do to improve next time? If you're done with all of your work here. If you see a person in your group who is also finished, I want you to share with that person. Share your thinking map, share your essay. Read it, evaluate it, give your partner feedback on things that they can do to improve their thinking map or their essay.
Any questions? You are allowed to talk to your group members if you need some help, but the majority of the work I need you to do independently because I want to see if you learned our um, lesson for today, how the text structures are similar and different, and why did the author choose that structure to support the essay they wrote. Got it? All right. My friends, Dakeithan, Kai, Devon, Colby, Akari, come with your things. Come sit up here. Once we got to our exit ticket, I know that some students have trouble with their writing and thinking on their own, so I decided to pull a few of my students who I have noticed struggled throughout the year, and I pulled them to my table and thought out the thinking map with them and thought out the writing process with them, so they were able to still do it on their own, but they were guided in some kind of way by the teacher. Let's look at our loose leaf first. What do we want to draw? Do we want to draw a Venn diagram or do we want to do a double bubble? Okay, some of us want a Venn, some of us want a double bubble. You draw what you want. I'm going to draw a Venn with you. And look at your chart. You're going to use this to help you figure out how the texts are similar. So let's put that clue words. How else are they similar? Look at your chart. What do they both have in common? Space, I would put that in there. Three is enough. We have good three good details. Clue words, inform, and space. Let's talk about how they're different. Passage one is what text structure? Passage one. Chronological order, so put that there. chronological order. And passage two is what? Ah, passage two. Once you're done with your VIN or your double bubble, you can get into your essay. Hmm? Look at passage two. What's the text structure of passage two? Let's talk about how we know Passage one is chronological order. What did it give us? Dates and time words, yes. Problems, and it said solution. It had those two clue words. Problem, solution, date, and we can have the introduction. We can put that in dates. Like, this has dates. Dates. I'm going to show you. And you're going to have your conclusion. All of this information on one of these. How is passage one different? This is your information, this is your answer. Tell me about passage two. How is it different? This is your answer. And then wrap up your essay with your conclusion. So, look at your prompt. Prompt? It's okay. Look at your prompt. How are the text structures of passage one and passage two similar and different? I need you to restate that in your introduction. That's going to tell the reader what your essay is going to be about. So look at your expert model. Look at how we wrote our expert model. Use those words to help you write your introduction. Let's see what you get. What's the genre of these two texts? Science Why a scientific article? It's about space. So I would use that genre somewhere in my writing, just to tell the reader what kind of passage you read. Once a few students were done with their essay, I always have my students share with another student to evaluate their work. Um, the students are to look at their thinking maps and share what they thought and give suggestions and feedback on what they could do to improve or some things that they thought were good in their um, thinking map. I also want the students to read their essays and just get an idea of how another student would word their answer to the prompt and also give feedback and suggestions on things that they could do differently to improve their writing.
and I want you to read each other's essay and look for things you would change, things you liked. I want you to give that person suggestions. So share your thinking maps first. Chronological order. Oh, no. From 1954 and first one. And for both, I put clue words, space. Hold on, no signs. Fictional text, and space. And that's what I put. I put clue words, space, and science. So you see some and for the next time, and differences in your in your um, not cool map, I'm sorry, in your VIN. Any suggestions you would give for next time? Oh, y'all both mm -hmm. had pretty much the same thing. Y'all, mm -hmm. your brains are on the same track. Go I put problem and solution keywords such as challenge, problem and solution, and space junk. I put problem and solution junk for the keywords, problems, and solution. Would you think that would be okay, Hayes, if you did that? Yeah. Same thing. So share your essays. You can swap laptops. Um, read each other's essay. If you come across something that you want to share with that person while you're reading, share that. Everything was good. Did they have all of their points? Did they show how the texts were similar and different? How the structures were similar and different? And what did what did she say on that in her in her essay? How did she write that the texts were similar? Very good. Did, do you agree with, look at what you wrote in your Venn diagram. Do you agree that the text structures are similar because they're both about space and form and use clue words? Good, yeah, that's right. And that's what he put. And that's what he put too. Good. So, when you read his, what did he say about the structure of passage one? The structure was what? It was chronological. Very good. And how did he, what is some evidence he gave that showed chronological order? 1984 and first. So he gave what? Clue words and um, time words and dates. Good. Clue words and dates. For her passage, for paragraph two, I mean, I'm sorry, passage two, what did she say her text structure was? The passage too. Problem Very good. And what did what's the problem that she wrote? <coughs> so space trunk is a problem for spaceships. And how did she say they were gonna solve to that solve problem? Solve it. They are also designing machines to remove junk from the oil. Do you agree with that? Do you agree that that's the problem and how they should solve it? Very good. In your conclusions, what does a conclusion do for your essay? So do you agree that their conclusion wraps up their whole essay? It was all about similar and different and how the structure supports what the author writes? Yeah. Very good. I read both of your writings and you have on track. Great. So let's talk about what we learned today. What are the two, two structures we read about today? Chronological order and problem and solution. Very good. Ten. How do we know a text is written in chronological order? Think about some of the things you saw in your passage you read today, what are some things you saw in your passage that made you think chronological order? Years. You saw some years, some dates. What else did you see? Mm -hmm. Some time or is good, 10 and 10. How did we know passage 2 was written in problem and solution? What are some clues you saw in that passage? It had the word problem. It had the word solution. It even had the word what? Challenge challenge in there as well. So that helped us figure out that structure was problem and solution. Very good. So we are going to continue to analyze different text structures next week. There are five text structures. We only learned about two so far. Next week we're going to learn about two more and you're going to use the same strategies that you used today to help you figure out the text structures of new passages. Next week we're going to learn about cause and effect and compare and contrast those text structures. And just like you use clue words to help you figure out problem and solution in chronological order, you're also going to use clue words to help you figure out compare and contrast and cause and effect. And you're going to see that same chart that you worked on today. So all those things are going to be, um, they're not going to be new to you. You've already done it, so it's going to be super easy. Any questions about what we did today? Everyone feels good about their test for tomorrow? Yes.